We all love legendary weapons in Borderlands 3, which is why I'm bringing you a compilation of all 8 locations of the new Legendary Mayhem 2.0 weapons, what they do and my personal opinions on all of them. I'll also be doing a compilation on all of the new event weapons soon, so be sure to be on the lookout for that, but for now let's jump straight into it. The Sandhawk. As many of you will know, this is a returning weapon from Borderlands 2 and personally one of my favourite weapons from that game. Now when I tell you this is a weapon you need to get your hands on, trust me, this thing absolutely shreds and is easily one of the best sniper rifles in Borderlands 3. Now to get this, you'll need to farm the boss known as Katagawa Jr. As most of you should know, he's a boss you will naturally come across in the main story, but just for reference, he can be found in the Atlas headquarters in this location on the map. Also, you do need to be on Mayhem Mode 6 or above in order to get this weapon to drop. And as always, it may take a few tries before you get this. So what does this weapon do? Well, it fires a burst of 9 projectiles in the shape of a bird, and these projectiles slowly expand as they travel which is very similar to how the Sandhawk worked in Borderlands 2. Except rather than it being an SMG, in this game it's a sniper rifle that's manufactured by Dahl. The weapon itself can come in multiple different elements and will also come with two different firing modes, ranging from full auto, burst fire and semi-auto. And the ones you will mostly be using for this is either full auto or semi-auto. As always, the weapon view for this thing will be shown on screen and bear in mind the stats for this are subject to change uh, depending on your level and what mayhem mode you was on at the time, etc. It also has the red flavor text which reads wedge a pick, which I think is most likely a reference to a flying wedge or wedge formation, which is essentially a military strategy in which a group creates a V-shaped arrangement and then move forward in a triangular formation. I mean, you guys can just see from the background gameplay how much damage this weapon does on Mayhem 10. The high projectile count and base damage truly make this one of the best out there, with the only real downside being its ammo consumption. Up next, we have the Plague Bearer, which is a brand new rocket launcher manufactured by Torg. Now to get this rocket launcher, you'll need to farm a boss known as the Warden, who can be found in this location of the Anvil region on Eden 6, while playing on Mayhem level 6 or above. Now the Plague Bearer can come in any element, uses 3 ammo per shot and fires an energy ball that constantly generates up to two pairs of additional projectiles, which spiral around the main projectile and home in on any nearby enemies, which is kind of similar to how the Scourge shoots. Anyway, the weapon view for this again will be shown on screen and as you can see this thing has a high base damage. Again, I try not to go too deep into the weapon stats as they're all subject to change uh, depending on the variant you get. As for its red flavor text, it reads, glad you could make it, in which I'm not entirely sure what this reference is. Overall, it's actually a pretty damn good rocket launcher and is mostly effective when mobbing for crowd control. Definitely pick this one up for yourself and give it a try. The K.O. Sun, or the Chaos Sun, I'm not really entirely sure how to pronounce it, uh, but this is a brand new legendary submachine gun brought to us by Dahl. Now this weapon can be obtained from Captain Traunt, who is located on the planet of Athenus in this location on the map. Anyway, the Chaos Sun basically fires sticky projectiles at a really high projectile speed. These stickies will then explode after a very short time and deal splash damage. Because of this weapon's high base damage and fire rate, you can actually put out great amounts of damage with this thing and truth be told, it can unload significantly more sticky projectiles than most Torg weapons. Of course, as usual, it can come in multiple variants and the one I obtained came with a times 2 modifier, ramping up the damage even more. And it can also come in multiple different firing modes, with burst fire or full auto being the favoured choice. As for the weapon's red text, it reads, small but packs a punch, which I think is simply a reference to it being a submachine gun that fires out a ton of explosive sticky projectiles. Overall, it's a great SMG for Mayhem 10 and definitely one worth adding to that collection of yours. 
Next up, we have the Reflux, which is a legendary shotgun brought to us by Hyperion. Now, the Reflux can be obtained from a boss known as Genevieve, who can be found in the Verocious Canopy region of Eden 6 in this location on the map. Now the reflux is always corrosive and fires 7 projectiles in a biohazard symbolic pattern. Hitting an enemy with this thing causes powerful corrosive bolts that will tether from the target to nearby enemies, which is almost functionally identical to the brainstormer shotgun. And because of the way this works, it makes it an absolute beast to use and is kind of like an upgraded version of what the brainstormer was. Now you can get a redundant version of this weapon, which is definitely the variant you will want to be on the lookout for, as it will spawn with 14 projectiles instead of 7, overall putting out a lot more damage. As always, the weapon view will be shown on screen, and again, as for its red flavor text, it reads, that's gotta burn which in conjunction with the weapon's name and corrosive element is a reference to actual acid reflux, which is a common condition we humans get from time to time that basically causes heartburn and happens when stomach acid flows back up into the food pipe. Anyway, overall, again, this is a great SMG and uh, definitely one you should pick up if you like these type of shotguns. So we're about halfway into the video and I've noticed 92% of you watching are not subscribed to the channel. So if you like what you see, subscribe. And also leave a like if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Anyway, up next we have the DNA. Now this is a very interesting weapon to say the least, as it's kind of like a hybrid of the Kutzman and Tsunami SMG, but not quite as good as you'd think. Anyway, to get this, you'll need to farm the boss known as General Traunt, who can be found in the Desolation's Edge region of Necrotefeo in this location on the map. Now basically, the DNA consumes 2 ammo per shot and fires slow moving projectiles that will each fire with a random element, and similar to the Kutzman, these projectiles chain together creating a beam but only a small beam in comparison. It also has a low magazine size as far as most SMGs go and sports a semi-decent overall base damage. As for its red flavor text, it reads, death cannot be contained, in which again, I'm not entirely sure what this reference is. If you do know what this is referencing, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. My overall opinion on this weapon is that truth be told, it's not that great, but that mainly could be down to the fact that I'm using it on flak, when this thing was clearly only made for one Vault Hunter in mind, that being Amara. Amara players out there, let me know if you think this weapon is any good. Coming in for the next weapon, we have the Backburner, which is a legendary rocket launcher manufactured by Vladov. Now to obtain this, you'll be farming the Agonizer 9000 a lot. Like seriously, this one took me a long time to get. But anyway, Agonizer 9000 can be found in the Guts of Carnivora region on Pandora in this location on the map. Now what does this weapon do? Well, it basically fires a giant energy ball that generates a singularity upon exploding and causes five smaller projectiles to erupt from the location that you hit. This thing can come in any element and as always the weapon view will be shown on screen. As you can see from the red text here it reads, we'll get to it eventually. Which in conjunction with the weapon's name is actually a reference to me and how I like to put certain things on the back burner sometimes and then I'll say I'll get to them eventually. Basically procrastination, come on we all do it sometimes, actually all the goddamn time. But getting back to the weapon, at the moment it doesn't seem that good. But a quick shout out to the YouTuber known as Thick Filet who made a video on this because apparently it's bugged at the moment and doesn't come with a part that makes it Mayhem 10 and is basically a non Mayhem mode drop even though you need to be on Mayhem mode to get this. So when Gearbox eventually get around to fixing this thing, it should be a pretty damn good rocket launcher. Another new weapon you can get your hands on is known as the Monarch, which is a legendary assault rifle manufactured by Vladov, and is kind of similar to the Dictator, but better. Anyway, this weapon can drop from Kilovolt, who can be found in the Electricity region of Promethea in this location on the map. 
but only after you've completed the side quest to kill him. Now as for the weapon itself, it can come in multiple different variants and elements and will either have a x4 modifier or x8. It has an extremely fast fire rate as far as assault rifles go and similar to the Dictator, it comes with a bipod that will slow you down but double the amount of bullets you shoot out. Now again, this thing shreds and the gameplay in the background does not do this weapon justice. I did not have the best character build or even weapon variant for this at the time of recording, but I can tell you it is one of the best assault rifles in the game for Mayhem 10. To finalize, in terms of the weapon's red text, it reads the deadly sting of the monarch, which with the weapon's name is a reference to the antagonist known as the monarch in the 2003 animated TV series called The Venger Bros. And for the final weapon of the video, we have the Multitap, which is a new legendary pistol manufactured by the Atlas Corporation. Now to get this, you'll be farming the boss known as Katagawa Ball, who is located in Skywild 27 of Promethea in this location on the map. Now the Double Tap basically has a secondary firing mode that shoots a tracker grenade that can track up to five targets, which causes the gun to fire bullets at every target you tracked at no additional ammo cost. In addition to this, when you reload the gun, it also fires a fast traveling cryo rocket at all tagged opponents. Now truth be told, I just do not like Atlas weapons in Borderlands 3. And personally, I don't think this is a good weapon for Mayhem 10, and just doesn't do as much damage as other weapons out there. But I don't know, maybe there's a build out there that suits this type of weapon. And to finalize this weapon, the red text reads double the fun, in which I am not entirely sure what that reference is. So again, if you do know, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.